I'm John Skinner and the jigging tackle and techniques in this video go along with those in my online course. You can learn more about that at saltstrong.com skinner and all of the gear will have links in the description of the video. And up in the front uh, we've got John Sweeney and you've seen me many times on his boat. Now my turn to take him out and we're out on Long Island Sound and I gotta tell you the fluke fishing there uh, this year has been way off. Um, but we're gonna go work some structure and, uh, and try for some fluke. But um, the real highlight of this trip uh, will be all of the big sea bass. Hey, that's what we're doing. We're gonna work this peak um, up the slope, over the peak, down the slope. And um, you know, sea bass season is opening in New York uh, right around the time you're watching this, if you're watching this soon after it was posted. And you know what, we can only keep three. Um, so as it works out, you know what, if you just target areas where you've got some um, bottom structure and certainly you know some um, edges and bars and so forth, pretty much the same kinds of areas where you would target fluke, um, most of those hold sea bass. They have both species. And the nice thing is, um, if you stick with this fluke jigging technique over these areas that have sea bass, well, you're going to catch the sea bass also while still having a great chance um, of getting fluke. So, uh, yeah, here we go. And um, there are going to be some really beautiful big sea bass caught this trip. But this was a little bit prior to the New York opening. We're in New York waters. We're going to let them all go. Yeah, that's a beauty. Mm. Well, wow, certainly one of the best looking fish that we've got in our waters and definitely one of the best eating. Uh, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I swear at these things a lot because when we're out fluke fishing off of Montauk, there's a lot of smaller ones there and they tear the gulp to pieces. Um, we're on pretty large sea bass here and I've got to tell you, we did not go through much gulp. We're using the six inch uh, gulp grubs. Um, you know, since we're here, like I said, the, the rigs are going to work fine for fluke or for sea bass. And uh, with these larger ones, they just didn't rip the tails uh, as badly as um, the smaller ones will. So it, it seems to be a good approach. You know, what? if these, if the sea bass are really tearing the tails off, then a great thing to do is leave the gulp stub on and um, put something like an otter tail bait strip that's a... Um, I, I like the curly one, and that's got a lot of action. So basically, you'll have the scent of having a gulp grub on, and um, you'll have the action provided by the otter tail bait strip. And an otter tail, for those who don't know, it has nothing to do with otters. Uh, that's the brand, and I'll put a link in the video description. Ooh, another big sea bass. And we'll be going that way soon, too. Oh, look at this kind of fish. You ever see one of these? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or, or it's a big double. <laughs> you all right? You good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, yeah. I just... What? Thick down there. That was a big double I had. Now we're targeting fluke here. We're, you're hoping to catch fluke. If we were, um, if the season was open and um, I came out here and wanted to target the sea bass, 
and, and get my three out of the way. Uh, I would tend to go to some of the deeper spots where there's more structure, and that's actually not even far off this. I mean, when I was running up at the beginning of the video, you saw that peak. Um, if I was targeting sea bass, I would actually uh, go up a little farther and um, drift back a little farther over the deeper areas because they often tend uh, to hold more and larger sea bass. But you know, well, there's just plenty of sea bass uh, up on top of this structure, and it's putting us right where I'm hopeful for fluke. Uh, but like I said, the, the sound fishing this year for fluke is, has been off for whatever reason. And, and I don't think it's a population thing because it was such a, a big drop from the previous season. It's, it's not part of the normal decline. And some areas are doing better in, with fluke than usual. So I think it's just a distribution thing. Uh, I know there's a lot of sand eels out in the ocean. Maybe the fish stayed on the sand eels. But, uh, well, we're going to have some fun with these things. Now, this has got to be a fluke. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Small, but it's a fluke. I'll, I'll be pretty ashamed if it's not. It is possible, and um, you know, having caught a couple gives me a little more confidence that they're. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you can catch a couple small ones, well, we, yep. it could be a big one out here. And this particular spot is not a high number spot for fluke. It's more of a quality over quantity kind of area. Um, with there not being a lot in the sound, um, I just opted for a spot that, you know, if we do get some, maybe we could get a big one. So that was the approach here. Uh, and the sea bass are certainly uh, a welcome addition to the, the fluke that we did catch. It just turned into dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> no, color's uh -oh. wrong. Is it a No. Nah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that was some hit. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Wow, he really clobbered that. It's going to be my fluke dinner. Oh, yeah? You're right. I don't know. I have no idea. Oh. It's nothing, no, oh, something's not right. Look at that. Up. Yeah, it's a big sea bass. Yeah. That, that's bizarre, isn't it? That's how this guy. Yeah. He didn't go yeah. up, but he caught sideways. Wow, look at this big, big guy. That's why. <laughs> Ooh, that is one fat ass yeah. sea bass. Yeah, this one's not pretty. It's just fat. up we go. So a good reason to target sea bass this way, uh, besides the fact that it also catches fluke, is that uh, this will cull out larger fish. Uh, you know what, if, if you put uh, hooks with squid or clams or anything like that down, yeah, you're going to catch a lot of sea bass, but you're going to be bothered by a lot of smaller fish, whereas these larger offerings and uh, with the gulp grub on there, uh, that's definitely going to get larger fish. And that's a good thing because uh, in New York, the limit is 15 inches. And if you fillet a 15 or 16 inch sea bass, there is not a lot of meat. I really don't like to keep these unless they're at least 18 inches. So this is a, a good technique for getting those larger fish. Ooh, got me another jumbo here. <laughs> It is nice to see that fluke here. And it's a lot more action than we thought. We, I thought we were going to be like standstill until we caught some. So this isn't very deep. It's like 30 to 50 feet. But as you get further into the summer, these fish tend to move off. Uh, and, and then they get out into the deeper water. And in this area, there's a, a few wrecks out there. And they certainly like to congregate around the wrecks. And uh, a smart thing to do is use this same technique to jig around the wrecks 
because there aren't many, but there are some very big fluke that will hang around the same structure. So hey, while you're uh, sea bassing, you know, why not give yourself a, a shot at a doormat fluke? And uh, certainly I'll be doing that in the summer as uh, the waters get warmer and the fish move off. There you go. Dropped right on his head, by the way. Yeah, on the high spot here. All right, now we're going to get into the largest sea bass and uh, one really special one at the end. Ooh, big sea bass, huh? Whoa, that's a beauty. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it's pool, pool sea bass. Wow. And yeah, look at him curled up. You know, he was just dragging the water. Yeah. Look at, mouth on look at the bump on his head. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Let's see. Yeah. All right, a freeze frame there. These big ones get that bump on the head, so that's a pretty cool one. But we're going to go bigger still. <laughs> Whoa, this is going to be a big sea bass. Bigger? <laughs> oh, man. Unless you have two. Hmm, might be. I don't know. Whoa. Yeah, you know what? It, it, I think it is too. I can feel the, the line grinding. You know, they probably swim by each other. No, it's oh my. That is like the that that is like the biggest sea bass I've ever seen. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap! Like tuna fishing. All right, I, I'm gonna actually if he, if he gets in the boat, which he will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get a picture of that one. And as big as this one is, the next one's going to be even bigger. Okay, this is a couple of days later, and up in the bow, uh, we've got my daughter, Dr. Katie Skinner, who a few days before this got her Ph.D. in robotics. So I've got her out in the waves, uh, hoping to catch her a fish. Ooh, what do you got there? Fluke, huh? Not a sea robin, I don't think. I don't think it's a fluke either. Oh, you know what? Maybe a sea bass. Yeah, okay, sea bass. I don't know if you've caught sea bass before. That's what it is, though. God! That is, the, that is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Wow. Oh, what a beautiful picture that's going to make. You know what? I'm going to just plant us here. Wow. That is... I've never caught one that big. Oh, yeah. I've definitely never caught one that big. Uh, that's giant. So uh, I was real happy to see her get that. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. There he goes. All right, very good. Uh, I'll see what else you can catch.